Howdy, partner. So here we are in another zombie hunt season. <laughs> yep, I dress up like this because I just went to see the latest zombie movie that came out, which is none other than the sequel to the beloved film Zombieland. Yep, this is Zombieland. Not well. I can't say Zombieland too. Is they call it Zombieland Double Tap, which honestly I I think I, sometimes I like it better when they don't add the number two. Sometimes they add just the sub the title. Uh, it depends on, on the situation, but nevertheless, I I just went there because I did remember watching Zombieland many years ago, and I thought that it was it was it was not a good movie. I was pretty. Uh, uh, definitely entertained by the antics. Also, it was during that time where zombies were really, really big and and made it called the attention to many people. I am not gonna lie that I was actually kind of like a sucker out of it during that time. I do remember that it kind of started out after watching in the big screens the remake of of uh, what was it, Dawn of the Dead. And but right now, unfortunately, the zombie craze kind of felt a little bit too saturated to the point that people, well, basically they don't kind of care or they are, they think that, oh yeah, we've seen this, this we're going to fill out every trope here and there. And I agree, yeah, but I still can, can get a little bit of an enjoyment out of it. Uh, case in point, last year when I saw Anna and the Apocalypse. And, but so, so when I saw that they were gonna make a sequel to Zombieland, in my head it was like, was it really necessary? It's been kind of like nine years or ten years ever since that movie came out, and what what they're gonna do about it? I I, I felt that this is a movie that it was better off left alone, um, keep it like a standalone, and also well. If they wanted to make a zombie land, I will suggest kind of like a TV series because anything can happen in this in this world. And well, anything can happen in, in any anything that is technically the zombie apocalypse. But now since it is the season of Halloween, so I decided to go there. Um, it was between this or Maleficent, the Mistress of Evil. And you know what? I rather eat cockroaches before I go to eat uh, to go see uh, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Because some people know I absolutely hated the first movie, and I don't want to subject to any more of those crappy sequels and crappy what if of of Disney to make Maleficent look really uh, like a pitiful character when it wasn't supposed to be like dirt. And I'm not, and yeah, I heard that there's a carnage on the third, on the third act. But you know what? I don't care. This, that, uh, that, uh, I, I rather, uh, what I already told you. So, so, uh, you know what? If you want to spend your money, uh, at least go, we'll go watch Zombie Land Two. Because honestly, despite the main flaws that Zombie Land Two has, or it's double, or double tap, whatever you want to call it. At least it will. It, it, I, I think that there is something like a better payoff instead of giving your money to Maleficent, uh, Mistress of Evil. Oh man! Apparently, I did went into uh, kind of like a cinephilic um, rage. I must admit. <laughs> um, all right. So, how, how do we get started? I already told you that. Um, no, no, I haven't even told you. Um, for those who doesn't know, Zombieland is basically kind of like the story of, uh, uh, at least in the first movie, we got eight Jesse Eisenberg playing this, this, this kind of, well, for lack of a better word, kid named Col uh, Columbus, which it's not actually his real name. Uh, all the character kind of, in order to keep themselves incognito, they, they, uh, they kind of call themselves uh, the names of places. The first movie, he, he meets up with, uh, what, what, what was it, uh, uh, this cowboy the guy named uh, Taylor, uh, what was it, Tallahassee, it, it kind of, I always forget, uh, played by Woody, Woody Harrelson. Uh, he also meets the, uh, this girl, played by Emma Stone, called Wichita, 
And, uh, and Abigail Breslin plays this, uh, her, uh, which is a sister named Little Rock. And yeah, they kind of become kind of like a, a ragtag team in the first in the first movie where where you know uh, Jesse uh, Jesse Eisenberg like slash Columbus is kind of like the nerdy kid who knows all the tropes and all the rules of zombie land, uh, how to survive the zombie apocalypse. Uh, Woody Harrison is kind of like the badass cowboy uh, boy who I do remember that the first movie his whole quest is to find a Twinkie. And which is that Little Rock trying to survive for themselves, but also trying to tr trust each other. So basically, they kind of became kind of like a like a family in that movie. So how does this fare on the second movie? My short answer: It was an okay film. I did enjoy it. Uh, uh, I did enjoy it because I didn't take it too seriously. But I can see why some people might have a little bit of disappointment. But I'll say that. If you're not too picky about it, you're going to find some kind of enjoyment out of Zombie Land Double Tap. What I mean to say is that this movie basically is like any other sequel that you can think of. It's not going to be as great as the, as the, you know, the last movie, usually because this movie is practically, well, nine years late. Uh, kind of like, it's most certainly surf kind of like a... Zombieland reunion, and it is. It's not kind of like this big giant story. It's just technically another another adventure with these guys, and then he said that they're grown up a little bit more because the movie takes place ten years. Uh, our the the ragtag team are uh, they settle themselves in the in the White House, but of course Little Rock now that she's grown older, she begins to miss to want to hang out with the, with peers around her age and all this stuff. So apparently the, the movie kind of starts out kind of like a chain of reaction in which uh, first because Col uh, Columbus tells Wichita that he wants to marry her, uh, she panics, she runs away with her little sister, and then one month one month later, uh, Wichita comes back alone saying that uh, that her little sister, uh, they find this guy who was technically kind of like this hit this hippie guy I mean his first word is like namaste uh, uh, what was his name Ber uh, Berkeley uh, uh, he not calls himself Berkeley and he just he uh, he just runs up he and, and little rock runs away and Wichita just comes back to to Tallahassee, Tallahassee and and Columbus in order to have her find her, since they're going road tripping, and the lack of the lack of clues that they have is that they have to go to I think it was called Graceland or where, where the land of Elvis Presley, according to this. I thought it was Nashville. Um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong in all this stuff. Um, well, and of course, there are zombies. And yeah, we have the pacing is. Is on the medium side, in which you're gonna find that some jokes land, some jokes are not, don't. It's technically like the other movie, it was a little bit of a tongue in cheek film, with, in which some of the flashy moments involve, um, uh, what was it, uh, this big, uh, big font, uh, kind of explaining uh, some of the, uh, what was it, the analysis of Jesse Eisenberg on, you know, on the so about the zombies. Um, a, a, a little bit, I gotta give them credit that they tried a little bit to to increase the risk on the ante on on the zombies because not exactly you can do much in a world where you only have race zombies. They just run and and they kill a lot and all this stuff. And, and yeah, I know that some games they have kind of other variation, you know, bloaters and all this stuff. And this one, they try a little bit something out there. I wish they could have a little bit more. The little that we got from this movie is that they introduce that they begin to say that well, zombies are beginning to adapt to nature. They're growing stronger, and now we can categorize them. Like for example, the dumb and stupid that goes like, they call them Homer, <laughs> like Homer Simpson. And yeah, they even had the font with the Simpsons donut. Uh, they also have the smart ones who are who they call them Hawkins, <laughs> like Stephen Hawking. And 
and the silent but deadly and their sneaky rounds are the ninjas. And guess what? None of these types, they, they contribute to the overall plot of the movie. Uh, Homer appears a little bit, but but the biggest threat that the, that the movie has is that they begin to encounter more resistant zombies that it takes them a more uh, for a while to kill them off. And they call it T-800, like the Terminators, because you, sh you shoot them and shoot them and it's hard for them to die. And the best way is that you have to melee them in, in their head. And they're kind of slightly smarter. And this is basically the only big threat that, uh, that th this movie has. And, and, and as far as I can tell, I, I kind of begin to forget to tell you that all the actors are actually do well. They, they are, I prefer Jesse Eisenberg playing that role instead of Lex Luthor. Uh, Emma Stone, uh, uh, Abigail, Ble uh, what was it? A A Abigail Breslin, she, she's fine, but oh, uh, my point it goes to Woody Harrison because this guy, uh, he was awesome in the first movie and he's still awesome in this, in, in this, in, in, in this, in this one. I mean, I, I think I said, I said it back. The last movie he was awesome. He was great. He was awesome at this movie also because I, I, if, if it wasn't for Woody Harrelson, uh, his cowboy mannerism, his his impetuous mannerism, and all this stuff, I don't know how the, the zombie land will could have handled because he's technically the cream of this of this film, and it is thanks to him that I, I could carry on with this movie without feeling bored or you know you know rolling my eyes out. So I'll give Zombieland a double tap this one, also. But of course, uh, we can also, we cannot ignore kind of like the new the new cast that this that this movie has. Uh, for example, one of the char another character that that appears is that uh, during this one month breakup, uh, uh, Ohio f finds this blonde girl in a, in a mall called Madison. She's played by uh, Soy Du De Cell Duch, IMDb, just I know. Um, she is practic practically probably the she could get the best way I can describe it is that imagine if imagine if you get the perfect combination of Paris Hilton and Patrick Starr. Because man that she is technically the epitome of the uh, the most stupidest blonde girl you could ever have in stereotype. Uh, I mean, she just uh, and yeah, everyone's a little surprised. How the hell did she survive? I mean, the least we know about her is that she just she just she was just locked in the fridge for uh, who knows how. Um, well, she was she was actually more like a running gag and a, and a plot, uh, kind of like a kind of like a. Like a kind of obstacle between the relationship between uh, Columbus and Wichita, but that's that's well, that's not, uh, and I, I think that's kind of a little bit of a weak part. But I think that she's kind of like a mixed bag in in being tolerable or not, because there are times in which, she, uh, despite her, uh, despite her stupidity, she kind of acts a little bit of a, as a human being. There is a scene that which I, I'm not going to reveal that she kind of got me a little bit of pity out of it. Even though, well, it, it kind of chased you in the nut later. Uh, then we got this, this character named Nevada, who is played by Rosario Dawson. And she, practically she's kind of like the a female Tallahassee, let's say, uh, to give him kind of like a love interest. And she's fine, she's badass, and, and, and she doesn't exactly do much. Oh yeah, and there's a hippie called Ber uh, Ber uh, Berkeley. Uh, I, I, he take, uh, one, of the, one of the things that kind of made me roll my eyes out it was a scene it, it, that is also in the trailer, in which she said, in which she said, in which Little Rock is like, hey, uh, do you have weed? Just because I am, you, you uh, do you think that I would, because I look like that, I'm like, uh, I, do you think I carry weed? Well, you're right. Uh, for some reason, Tegrity Farm got into my, into my head. 
But basically, he's just a hippie that he's that he and Little Rock they go to apparently this uh, this hippie commune uh, they call Babylon, and yeah, they act like like hippies in which they got no guns, no no violence, no anything. Still, kind of makes you beg the question: How the hell did they manage to create uh, uh, kind of like the, uh, uh, a living place uh, where? Uh, surrounded where there's a lot of sun. Yeah, there's one of the things that this movie has is that it kind of makes you question some things. I know that I, I kind of I, I don't remember Zombieland being a little bit too grounded. There's some really really kind of like like dumb things, but I didn't mind. I didn't mind. There's a little bit of a running gag in which it involves it, it involves trying to find out who made the 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 zombie kill of the year, the zombie kill of the month, and and so on, so on, so on. Um, but uh, so there is some. I will say that there are some bits, uh, bits that you might roll your eyes out. But probably I will say that I might have one of the, the better laughs of this movie, and the audience also knew it because this is probably the funniest part of the movie. Uh, in, in at least in my opinion or the audience opinion, the lack that there was. Is that it? Is that while well, they're on this Graceland uh, replica, uh, uh, what was it? Elvis Presley tribute. Uh, they they kind of encounter kind of like the doppelgangers of uh, Tallahassee and and Columbus. Uh, both both played by respectively uh, Luke Wilson and Thomas Thomas Miltich. and they're kind of like you know both the same and both the opposite and. And the reaction is like the what the what the hell is going on? It, I mean, for me, it was weird. It, it was almost like we just we just saw. It was like somehow Zombieland made a crossover with 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 Jordan Peele's Us. That was honestly for me that was weird. Come to think of it. I think I might be a little bit too forgiving on, on this movie now that I think about it. I know, I don't have a little bit of the heart to be too harsh on this movie. And it's probably because I like the characters, I like the world, I like the little bits of humor that this movie left behind at least. Uh, it, it's just that, well, I did kind of enjoy it, at least as a B movie. Uh, I'm not exactly want to be kind of like hard or become like kind of like this angry reviewer or something. Uh, especially on movies that technically don't kind of deserve it. But I do have a little bit of a of a nitpick saying that yeah, they they should have taken advantage of uh, of of the typical the different characteristic and classes of zombies. Uh, make them give them kind of like new designs or. Or something like that, in order to feel that there is a real imposing threat that zombies are evolving instead of you know just being too resistant or smart or something like that. Uh, it kind of makes me want to beg for bloaters. Uh, the climax is good, I'll say that. Uh, I do have an. I, there is a moment that I actually kind of almost shed a tear, but it just but. It, it's not because of the moment, but it's technically because you do feel like attached to the characters if you have a soft spot to the character to, uh, of this movie. Although, yeah, some decisions were kind of dumb, uh, at least at the very, very end, I'll say. But I do want to tell you that there is, uh, there is a mid credit sequence, and I heard that there is a... Uh, and uh, after credit sequence that I didn't bother to stay because I didn't know, but you know what? I'll ruin you at least here, um, because you know what? I don't think you will care, but I'm, not, I'm gonna. But at least I'll tell you that there is uh, when when the character Nevada was introduced, she kind of she kind of said that. She had, wants to have a vendetta against the people who kill off Bill Murray. Um, if you know what happened in the first movie, I was like, you were going to be like, oh. So, 
So what does it have to do with it, what I meant uh, uh, before? Here's the thing, is that on the mid credit sequence, we got, apparently they found uh, some footage. Uh, I don't know, Jesse Eisenberg kind of breaking the fourth wall saying that, Oh, you, uh, uh, Bill Murray, uh, here's, he, here's a clip about what he was doing before the apocalypse. Um, yeah, we got that. Uh, apparently we got Bill Murray uh, uh, giving, a, giving a press conference or uh, was an interview that they were promoting Garf Garfield 3. I don't know who the hell is gonna be crazy enough to promote Garfield 3, but apparently it happened because they wanted to rehash the joke of the Garfield joke on on Zombieland, and apparently that yeah the uh, the zombie apocalypse starts and Bill Murray apparently begins to kick zombie ass. That's pretty much what you're gonna get in that sequence. Well, I don't think I have much to say of, uh, anymore about this movie. Is it a bad movie? Uh, not really. It has the typical thing that uh, sequel movies has, especially uh, in this day and age in which there's a little bit of zombie movie exhaustion, in which, uh, in which it's kind of diminishing a little bit considering that we, in which there's not many zombie movies appearing, uh, you know, all the time. I mean, remember last? I think my my last zombie movie I saw uh, last year in movie theaters was Anna Anna and the Apocalypse, and that and that one I like the, some some of the spins that they give out. This one is technically run of the mill, kind of like a little bit a few years late, uh, but it should have a little bit of a soft spot, spot for Zombie Land. It doesn't hurt to check it out. It's it, it's it's technically worth it a little bit for a, for a few minutes of your time if you have nothing else to do and you just want to see zombies. Uh, yeah, nothing special to see on this. Now, excuse me, I got some work to do.